What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're gonna be doing another edit along with me video. So this way, we can actually edit together, grab some free raw files over at signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. We got a mixture of some landscapes, some portraits, some indoor stuff, some outdoor stuff. We're gonna take a look at a few varieties of photos. You can just practice your editing and hopefully learn a thing or two along the way. So open up Lightroom, grab those photos, grab yourself a snack, get comfy, and let's hit those edits together. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so inside of this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the following raw files. If you haven't grabbed them already, head over to signatureedits.com and you can download these absolutely free. And if you're wondering where you can use them, if you can repost them, yes, you can. Just make sure where there is an original author in the file name, you make sure to credit them. And if you tag at Signature Edits Co on Instagram, you can let me know and I can see those photos, what you come up with. So let's import these files. And we're going to get started to Geja. So this is the first time I've seen these photos. Wow, can't talk today. Uh, this is a beautiful one by, I don't know. Also, it's a JPEG, so we're not going to be doing too much with it. But whatever. <laughs> Free raw files and one JPEG. <laughs> so we're going to just take some contrast, take some exposure up. We can't push it as far because it's a JPEG photo, but it looks like it was unedited. So it's still like a raw, unedited version. So I'm going to go like that. And then when it comes to a beautiful landscape shot like this, it's really about just bringing out the elements that you want to bring the attention to. So in this case, we're going to grab these wooden blocks and we're just going to grab some clarity, some texture, some dehaze, maybe raise the whites up on them a little bit. Just make them pop out of the frame a little bit more. And we're going to do the same thing with this dock here. And if you're thinking this is a really sloppy mask job, you're pretty much correct. We're going to tone it back so that it's not as noticeable. And then I like to paint in layers. So what that means is I'm not going to try and add all of my edits all at once. I did a really kind of general once over of these logs. And now I'm going to get a little bit more detailed and not cover absolutely everything. A little bit more detailed brush. I'm going to just raise the exposure a little bit on these log tops like that. Maybe add a little bit more texture. I don't know. It just depends what you're feeling. And then same thing on this dock. So just this little boardwalk here. Maybe this man. Okay, so here's before and here's after, right? Now, if you're wondering how this shot was actually taken to get that really beautiful glassy finish on the ocean, it's not just because the ocean was really still, although it probably was, and it was around sunset or even when it was dark outside. What would have happened is this photographer went out on the beach with a tripod and they set their f-stop way high. You can see that. And shutter speed was set at 30 seconds. So the reason they're doing that is because once you have that slow, long shutter speed, all of the motion is going to turn into this really creamy, beautiful kind of uh, what do you call it? Washy fairy tale kind of vibes. You're not going to get still motion. All of the motion in the photo is going to be really blurry. And so in this case, the waves look really glossy like cotton candy. Okay. Now, lastly, let's work on this sky, just bringing out some color and maybe adding some color and some texture into the water as well. So let's hit I on our keyboard to hide that info. And then just do a little brush on the sky. Now, if you ever want to add blue to the sky, the easiest way to do it, just go to your temperature up here in the white balance and take that temperature down. You'll see we add blue to the sky right away. And in general, I've just found when you warm up the white balance, you're going to desaturate the sky because most of the time the sky is blue. And so when you add yellow to the sky, the blue and the yellow cancel out and you get a less saturated sky. So if you want it more saturated, just take it towards blue a little bit. Okay, and we could probably do the same thing on the water, actually. The more blue areas... I could just go over here with my brush super quick like that. So here's before this brush and here's after just a little pop of color. Now we're going to do the same thing with these kind of pinkish yellow areas in the sky and in the water. So kind of about there and here, if you ever want to see your brush, just hit O. And again, if I were editing this to print, maybe I take a little bit longer, but we're just having fun. And I'd encourage you, you don't have to take forever to do this edit. Sometimes it's nice just to go fast, see what you can come up with. And then if it doesn't work out, you didn't waste that long. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add a little bit of pink in our white balance there. Maybe even warm it up just a little bit. Now you can see that if I wanted this to blend a little bit better, I would need to make sure I went back with my brush, took the flow down and really feathered it in a strong way. But because I'm going to keep it a little bit more subtle, hopefully we can get away with that. 
Okay, so here's before, here's after. Good, and now, depending on what you want, you could maybe raise the shadows up a little bit, add some dehaze, that's an easy way to add a little bit of contrast and pop and saturation to your colors. And then, sky is the limit. From there, do whatever you want. That's where I'm gonna stick it for today. Okay, moving on to our actual raw files instead of raw JPEGs. Uh, this file looks pretty good. We're just gonna warm it up a little bit. Then we're gonna take our contrast down because right away I can see the whites on her shirt getting clipped and the blacks in her hair pretty dark. So I wanna maximize that dynamic range by doing this. And then we're gonna add some pop later on. So here's before, here's after. I've just kind of smoothed it out, warmed it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my highlights down even more. And we're gonna head down to the tone curve to add some pop. So I'm gonna hit the tone curve three times, once in the middle, once up here in the highlights, and once down here in the shadows. And I find I get great success just by taking these shadows in the tone curve, like that, just until you get the right amount of pop. And then the highlights, we can do the same thing, find out where feels the best. So you might be wondering to yourself, Ryan, why would you actually do this rather than just contrast on the actual upper exposure panel here? Why not just do this? The reason is control. When I'm using the tone curve, I can dial in exactly what part of the highlights I want to boost and what part of the shadows I want to clip. Now, depending what we want to do here, definitely want to bring out the greens in this apple. So let's just add some saturation in there, a little bit of contrast, maybe even a little dehaze. Good. Slightly too much saturation. And I don't really like the vibe of this apple. Don't like the green. So if you wanted, you could try something kind of interesting. We're going to go for a range mask and set it to color. Then we're going to dab it on this apple. Hold shift to get this plus button, and you can just add a few other points to draw the color from to make sure that mask is covering as much of that apple as we can. Okay, so I've got my apple. I've got my range mask. Now I can hopefully adjust the color exactly the way I want. And how am I going to do that? Well, I could go to this color button right there and just select whatever color I want for the apple. Let's make it a little bit more green instead of yellow. Something like that. Okay, so here's before and here's after so far. Now what else could we do? It all depends on what you're liking. I'm thinking we'll add a little bit more of a soft vibe to the image by clipping the whites a little bit. Bring the blacks up a little. And then we can kind of bring back some of these Highlights and shadows, maybe press the J key whoops, on our keyboard. That'll make sure we know when there's any clipping happening. Sometimes. Sometimes Lightroom is buggy and doesn't show up. And just add a little bit more pop. Maybe a little dehaze. Now it all depends what you like. You might want it with less pop. You might want to do more of an HDR thing. You can take your shadows up. We can play with the HSL panel. Or if we wanted to really place the focus on her, sometimes I'll do this because the background is already out of focus. Let's just enhance that. Let's make it like we took it with an even shallower lens. This was taken with a, what kind of lens? An f2.8, 28 to 70. So let's pretend we're using a prime that had a really shallow depth of field. Well, we just take our texture down, clarity down, dehaze down, contrast down a little bit. I'm gonna invert that by pressing the apostrophe key on my keyboard. And if you want to see this overlay, just press O. So you can see now we've got this really kind of creamy, blown out, out of focus, decontrasted background. And I'll darken it down a little bit. And then just dial it in so that it's not too, too far. Or instead of making it darker, you could even go the other way and make it brighter. Now an easy way, if you want to dial back all these settings kind of at once, hit this little triangle here on the side then you should be able to just grab this one slider and adjust all of those settings with each other at the same time. So I'm going to dial it back somewhere around there. So here's before, here's after. Let's move on. Again, my goal here isn't to astound you with my editing abilities. It's mostly just to give you a few different ideas and tips that you can then apply, practice, and have some fun with. So this shot by Michael Hessel. Great job, Michael. I love this photo. Really cool, dreamy waterfall. The thing that I'm not loving, that's poking out to me right away, is these rocks here in the foreground. Now your eyes are naturally in the composition, going to be drawn to the brightest part of the image. And unfortunately, because we've got this big cloud above this beautiful waterfall, the rocks are kind of the parts that's drawing my eye the most. So the first thing I'm going to do is darken that down and just 
take some of the focus off of there. Press J so I hide that clipping. Okay, something like that. Make it really subtle by making a giant radial filter. And then I'm going to take my contrast down, highlights down, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down, pretty much everything down. <laughs> okay, now we've got it a little bit closer where my eye is now drawn to the waterfall instead of these stones. So here's before and here's after. See how the light has just shifted and the way your eye naturally goes has changed as well. Okay, next thing, next. And let's grab this waterfall and see if we can enhance it a little bit because it looks a little kind of soft and dreamy and I would like to have a little more texture. So I'm going to reset my brush. Just brushed on the waterfall like that. Let's add some texture, add some clarity, add a little bit of dehaze, somewhere like that. And then we can kind of follow the mountain as well around it and that'll help blend it a little bit better. So I'm not adding this to the entire hillside, just to the rocky parts. And hopefully that's going to give us a nice kind of texture, make things pop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's before and here's after. Just sharpen things up. I'm going to take my clarity back because that just looks too far and add a little bit of sharpness something in and around there next let's play with our colors because I'm thinking I want to do something with these greens they seem a little bit yellow so I'm going to take my hue and just adjust it maybe make the yellows a little bit more red and the greens a little bit more towards blue and then I'm going to desaturate them we're going to see and try and play with the luminance. Sometimes you can get a deeper green that just feels a little bit better by playing around. I find, honestly, to this day, the hardest thing to get right in a photo is the greens. If you can get the greens right, life is easy, but they can be tricky sometimes. So you can see I've really made it a lot more cool. Then I'm going to compensate by warming everything back up like that. And add a little bit of vibrance. Okay, so what's next? Well, we have this valley over here. You can see that the sun almost looks like it's kind of peeking out from behind this hill. So we could add sort of a pretend lens flare coming from this direction, almost like the sun is peeking through the clouds. So to do that, we're going to grab our exposure, take it up, contrast way down, highlights down, shadows up, whites down, blacks up, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down, saturation down, warm it up. You can just pause, copy something like that, and we have this kind of mobile sun flare happening here. Now we're going to dial it in a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to place it kind of around here-ish and try and get the color right. So I'm going to definitely take that temperature back down. I don't want it that warm. Something like that. I'm going to extend it so it's even more blended. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to go into my brush and I'm going to erase it off of this hill because if this were a sun flare coming in from behind this hill, well, we don't want it on top of the hill. Hopefully that makes sense. If you hold Alt, you're going to toggle to the eraser brush just like that. So here's before and here's after. We've kind of added a little flare in behind our hill. You can keep playing with that until you feel about right. Okay, so here's before and here's after. What else could we do? I think now let's just add some shaping overall to the image. So by that, I mean we're going to do some dodging and burning. I'm going to take my exposure up by half a stop. It's probably too far, but for now it'll be easy to see what we're doing. And all of the light parts or parts that I want to be brighter, I'm going to exaggerate. So these pieces of stone here, things that are just naturally brighter, I'm going to make pop a little bit more by adding a little exposure selectively. And this is the really creative, fun part of the image. Honestly, some of the best edits you've ever seen, the secret is less about an amazing filter or any you know, top secret ninja tricks. It's just patiently going through like this and shaping the light. And that's what makes the difference between a photographer who has really stunning work and one whose work is good, but just meh. 
It's that extra time they take. Instead of just trying to do a big filter on everything, they're really dialing in selective parts of the image to get it right. And I'm no master of this, but hopefully you can see the difference between before and after. I really brought out some texture by enhancing those areas. Now, if you don't want to take that long in going through and dodging and burning selectively, you could grab a brush like this. I'm going to brush it on kind of everything in here. And I'm going to go to Range Mask. We're going to set it to Luminance. And then take that range and turn it all the way kind of to the top. So if I press O, you can see as I do that, it's now just grabbing the bright parts of the image for me anyways. Then I can just grab my exposure, bump it up, and we're kind of doing the same thing, but without having to manually go through. So manual can be great. Sometimes that Range Mask trick is all you need. So we're going to do the same thing, but with burning now. So go to Range Mask, Luminance. And the cool thing is you can actually combine this. You don't have to do it on the entire image. So if I wanted to, I'll show you in a second. I'm going to start by just grabbing my shadows. Honestly, that just does not look super good. But you can do all sorts of different effects too. So you could just make the shadows blue, for example, and separate your colors that way and just get more contrast by doing a juxtaposition of color between maybe a warmer temperature in the highlights and a cooler temperature in the shadows. Or you can add any color you want to the shadows, right? So you don't necessarily just have to use the color grading panel to add color. You could do it just like this. And again, if you want to, you can apply this to selective areas of the image. So just these bushes, bushes, plants, whatever they are in the foreground of the image aren't looking so good to me. So let's just grab our range mask, set it to luminance, set that range all the way up. We're just going to add a little bit of pop just to those plants. Now, I went way too far while I was demonstrating that. So let's track down. Track down that other filter here somewhere. Ah. Okay. So here's before. Here's after. Is it done? No, I would keep messing around. Make sure I clean things up a little bit. Haven't even gone into the sharpening, whatever, playing with these clouds. We could enhance these clouds a little bit, um, not necessarily by making them more cloudy. <laughs> They're already cloudy, but just by going along the edge of the clouds. Sometimes that can be really helpful just to give it a sharper definition. Just like that. And then we're going to reset that brush by holding Alt. Go down to our texture and just bring that up. Maybe clarity up a little bit the haze up a little bit, and maybe our blacks and our shadows down. So by creating more contrast along the line of those clouds, they're going to pop out more. So here's before, and here's after. So that's where we came from. That's where we wound up. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Tag at Signature Edits Co. so I can see it. We're going to move on. That took way too long, so we'll speed things up a little bit, I promise. Here's a very beautiful cathedral. Cathedral. Can't talk today. I'm going to start just by flattening things out because we got like a really wide dynamic range in this shot. And then I'm going to add some texture selectively and with the tone curve. So first off, let's just add a little bit of pop with our tone curve somewhere around there. And just mess around and see what feels right. So in this case, I'm not actually going to raise the highlights. I'm going to lower them slightly because we've already got such a dynamic image. Let's set this to fit our screen. So here's before, here's after. <laughs> We've just really mellowed things out. It looks kind of HDR, but now is where we're going to come in with the dodging and burning. So this is a perfect photo to practice your dodge and burn skills. So let's get started. First thing, I'm just going to grab these pillars. Oops. Do a slightly less messy job. And you're going to say to yourself, okay, what areas, if I was coming in here with lights and I was trying to light this for a photo, where would I want to light? That's kind of what you play around with. So the archways, basically the most important lines that are really grabbing your attention. That's what I'm going to start with enhancing and adding some brightness to. Mm -hmm. Now you could turn your auto mask on for this. It might make it easier or it might not. Sometimes Lightroom works great for that. Other times not so much. 
So I'm doing a very quick job, just showing the technique. You can take longer, make it better. So here's before, here's after, right? That's round one. Now we're gonna go through again. This time we're gonna darken it. And generally, wherever there is a bright line, right next to it, you're gonna have a shadow. Wherever there's a highlight, there's probably a shadow right nearby. So on the outside of these columns, oops, is where I'm going to darken down. And you're going to see as we do this, we're adding contrast to the image little by little. It's going to take shape and feel a little bit less HDR, a little bit more like, holy crap, this is awesome. And it's fun. Let's take your time. Do a little bit better job than I am. And I haven't even touched this window or anything like that yet, so. There's lots to do. Okay, now shadows. On either side of all of these little highlights, there's gonna be a shadow, right? So we could go in here and that's just gonna make those highlights pop that much more. So here's before and here's after, right? And you can take down the shadows and the exposure a little bit less and that'll give you maybe a slightly more subtle effect. And again, we just do the exact same thing but this time, maybe we're going to add some contrast, a little bit of saturation, a little clarity to the areas that really could use it. So by doing it selectively like this, you're going to wind up with much more strategic, intentional edits. If you just grab the clarity and taken it up on everything, well, then everything is sharp. And so nothing is sharp. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's the contrast between the sharpness and things that are soft and things that are bright and things that are dark that really bring the photo to life and give it meaning and interest visually and direction. Okay, so I'm going to take that. Not worry about the exposure down, but we'll bring the shadows down, whites up, highlights up, blacks down. Right, so little by little, you're shaping the photo. I'm gonna do one more. This time we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna say what areas don't really need any detail. Let's darken those down and minimize them. So you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm trying to do this very quickly. So we're gonna do a very messy mask. But again, parts of the image that aren't really super eye-catching like the walls in between these pillars, we can minimize those. It's sort of like that old sculpture story, right, where people asked Da Vinci or whoever it was, Michelangelo, how do you actually know how to carve a lion or a walrus out of a block of marble? And he said, I just start with a block of marble and I take away everything that's not a walrus. That's not the quote at all. <laughs> but hopefully you get my drift. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what's important in this photo? What's not important? Let's prioritize that which is important. Let's enhance it. And let's minimize that which is distracting. Okay, so this most sloppy mask you've seen in your entire life, but hopefully you're seeing that it's making a difference overall. <laughs> and then I can grab this little arrow brush. We're gonna dial that back because it's way too intense to get away with because my mask was way too sloppy. But here's before and here's after. And then at any point, if you want to, yeah, you can raise those highlights up a little bit, bring those whites back up, bring those blacks down. You're left with an image that has just a lot more direction, a lot more focus, a lot more three-dimensionality <laughs> than had we just taken our exposure up, added some contrast, and called it a day. So hopefully this was helpful. Have fun. Okay, we got a cool portrait. I'm not going to worry too much about it doing anything the proper way. We're just going to see what happens. I'm thinking shadows up. <laughs> because we kind of clipped his jacket a little bit. And clearly, this is the subject of our photo, so we're going to want to enhance that. 
I've got a cool brush called Brooding Dehaze Darken. I'm going to invert it. And you can see it just darkens everything else down, makes everything else a little bit more hazy. Okay. Something like that. Add a little dehaze. Cool. Now, if you wanted to, we could add a color cast to this image, I think, because the smoke is there. Maybe we could do something kind of interesting. So we're going to grab our smoke with a really quick brush. And I'm going to make it kind of more green. Kind of like we got a fluorescent light vibe because we're under some fluorescent lights. And then enhance it a little bit further. Cool, maybe add some dehaze to just make it seem like there's even more smoke. Good, here's before, here's after. Nothing super fancy, just sort of added some focus to the image. And then lastly, just gonna take the shadows up on his coat a little bit. Okay, good. That's our shot. Moving on, dude on bike. Okay, let's do a cool effect. If you ever wanna do kind of the black look, we're just gonna grab the saturation on everything and turn it all the way down. I feel like it's gonna match this because he's on a motorcycle, okay? Saturation down on everything except for our skin tones, which are, in this case, because he's not a white guy, we can get away with even pushing it further, which is awesome. Wish I had dark skin like that, it'd be great. Okay, so there's our photo so far. We desaturated everything. Kind of made him pop off the background a little bit more. Dehaze up. We're doing speed edit edits now. Somewhere around there. So here's before and here's after. Now if we wanted to, which I do, I'm just gonna take the luminance of these greens and yellows down slightly. And call it a day. Here's before, here's after. That's my take on it. You do you. Okay, this one we're gonna start by rotating somewhere in here. Photo, rotate left. Okay. Now, male portraits, I actually like to make the skin less soft, like you add the texture and you really lean into the clarity and the dehaze. It's kind of the opposite of what you do with the portrait of a woman where you want every pore to be smoothed out and beautiful. I feel like it really adds character by enhancing the scars and the lines and that kind of thing. Next, I'm gonna go through in the parts that really just need um, a little extra texture. I'm gonna do that. So his eyes, eyebrows. And of course, if this were a portrait for like a real estate agent, we wouldn't take this approach. We're just assuming this is like a street portrait for National Geographic, I don't know, for Times, for Forbes, I don't know. But by doing it that way, we really just enhance kind of the masculine quality of it rather than if we had gone really soft. Okay, just a couple more to go. We got a nice portrait here. Let's fit it to our screen. So first things first, we've got a major color cast from the grass down here. So what's happening is the sun is hitting this grass, which is reflecting into her face. So if you zoom in, you can actually see she's all green under here where the grass is coming up. If I add some contrast and enhance the vibrance or the saturation, you're going to see that really come up. This is all just because the grass is reflecting light onto her face. So that's one thing to be aware of when you're taking portraits. Just think about, okay, what other ambient light is happening here? Because there's light bouncing off everything. It's not just coming directly from the sun, especially with grass. You're going to have to deal with that. So that's why when possible, I actually avoid taking portraits on grass. I'd rather do it um, in the forest <laughs> or just somewhere that's not on bright neon green. So if you can get a different type of green that she's around, that's fine. But green grass, not so good. Anyways, let's reset this. We're going to start by just adding some contrast. Let's dial the highlights back a little bit, dive into our tone curve, and take those shadows down a bit. Okay, and take my exposure up. Take my 
blacks up a little. Okay, and now we've got so much saturation from those greens, we're going to take our vibrance down until things kind of level out. So vibrance is going to affect all of the colors, but it's going to weigh the colors that aren't skin tones more than the skin tones. So what I mean is, as it does go up or down, it's going to adjust the greens and the blues and the purples more than it's going to adjust the oranges and the reds. Whereas the saturation is going to adjust them all at kind of the same rate. So if you want to get rid of greens, but not so much the skin tones, then just take your vibrance down. If you want to get rid of all the color, take your saturation down. So we're going to do a combination. First, we're going to take our vibrance. Let's try it all the way down and then add our saturation back up. And then dial it back in until our skin looks normal again. And our green is just going crazy. So some problems, you need to go to the source. Let's grab our greens and our yellows and desaturate those bad boys. And you can see as I do that, it looks really weird because it's desaturating off of her skin because her skin had so much reflected green light on it. So we're going to have to deal with that. work around it somewhere around there so here's before here's after we're coming we're not there but we're we're making some progress next i'm gonna raise i was gonna raise my highlights but that's not working for me so we're gonna take another approach i'm going to just mask on our subject here and we're gonna add some dimension and some contrast to her rather than the whole photo so we're gonna add some exposure i'm gonna drop the contrast actually then i'm gonna raise the whites and lower the blacks. So lowering the contrast kind of smoothed everything out. And then adding those whites and blacks is adding the contrast back in. So you can see here's before that brush. And here's after. We've brightened her up. We've added some pop. And we've also cleared up the skin a little bit. Now I'm going to go in and opposite to our portrait of our cool lifestyle street photography man. We're going to go down here to our skin soften brush. You can just copy this if you want, or you can buy these brushes. They come with any of the Signature Edits preset packs. And I'm just going to brush on her skin. And her skin actually looks flawless. Like, it's really, really nice. The problem is not her skin complexion. The problem is that we've got weird color smudging going on from the green of the grass, and then there's some red, and there's just weirdness. So by doing this and taking our contrast down, highlights up a little bit. Whites up a little bit. We're just smoothing things out. So those colors aren't going to be such an issue. And the fact that we've blown out um, by accident, it looks like we've got a hot spot on the back of our foot that we can't recover. Well, by doing that, hopefully we're going to be able to make it as smoothed out, not so obvious. And then we go in again, just on that one area, grab our highlights, pull them back, pull the whites back, somewhere like that. Now, remember, your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of this photo. And in this case, it might even be her feet right now. So that's an issue. We're going to want to grab one more adjustment brush or radial filter. Grab our contrast. Take that up. Grab our exposure. Take that up a little bit. Highlights up, maybe. See how that feels. Whites up. Like that. Okay, here's before. Here's after. Probably took it a little too far in the contrast department, so you can dial that back. See what feels right for you. And we can maybe add a little bit of saturation back in. Just a bit. Okay. So I'm feeling like that's okay. You could do all sorts of other things. Just mess around. Play with these greens. See if they look better darker or brighter. I'm leaning towards brighter, actually. And the one thing I really don't like is there's some weird fringing going on. And that's just a matter of whatever lens was used for this photo. Oh, look, I was editing another JPEG. That's kind of funny. So with this particular JPEG, the reason we've got the fringing is probably because, well, it's a JPEG, not a raw, not as much latitude. But we can try and fix that by going down here to our defringe, select the edge here, and sometimes it'll work. But in this case, it looks like it's not picking it up. So another easy way to do that, we're going to brush on here. This is good practice. What to do if you wind up shooting in JPEG instead of getting a RAW file. And we're just going to grab our texture and our clarity, bring those down, bring the dehaze down, maybe brighten it up a bit, add some saturation to balance it out. So here's before and here's after. Bada bing, bada boom. Before, after. 
So you can play with that, see what you like. Obviously, that's not the best job with the defringing, but hopefully you understand the process. I'm not going to waste too much time there. Okay, this, this is a stunning photo by Odd Bod Photography. The bod may be odd, but the photos are on fleek. Let's zoom in here to fit. Now, this is so pretty, I honestly don't even feel like editing it. Like, it's just, it's too good. Too good. But we're going to start by just dodging and burning and kind of bringing out what's already there because it's so good, I don't really have to do any major corrections to the image. I can just sort of be creative, which is awesome. So thank you for sharing this photo, Odd Bod. I'm going to start with the sky by adding some more pop to this blue. Easiest way. We brushed on. We add some blue. Bada bing, bada boom. Increase the contrast a little bit. A little saturation. And we might even play with the hue a little bit. Right around there. So here's before, here's after. A little pop of color. Next, we're going to brighten up this hill because it is definitely the centerpiece of our photo. So I'm not going to be too fussy about my brush here. I'm going to brush on the hill in general. Then I'm going to go to a range mask, set it to luminance, and just take that part. Because I know the hill's darker than the sky, so it's really easy to use the range mask to mask it out. I'm going to reset the brush, and we're just going to add some whites and some highlights. Maybe a little overall exposure. Texture, clarity, see what feels right. There's before and there's after. Okay, now this fence area is really beautiful too. I wanna to enhance that, but first, I'm just gonna darken it down overall. Because again, it's the brightest part of the photo and I really want the brightest part to be this hill. That's where I want your eyes to go. So let's darken it down. Do a little bit better with my masking. Good. Now overall, I can raise the exposure up. And our sky, we're gonna wanna see if there's any detail that we can save. Because it looks like our sky is getting blown out a little. So we'll reset this, take our highlights down. A little texture, a little clarity, maybe even a little dehaze, I don't know. We also want to raise the whites because we still want our sky to be white. We don't want it to seem gloomy. We just don't want to blow it out so that it's really gross. So maybe we'll try lowering the whites. Mm, that's the opposite of what I want. Even I don't know. And then our blue's looking a little too saturated, so take it down a little. Before, after. Okay, now let's do some dodging and burning. I'm going to start with doing some burning or darkening. So I'd encourage you, take your time on this. See what you can come up with. And if the first time you don't love it, try doing it again. Sometimes practicing on the same photo a few times until you get it right, you really figure out, okay, this is what I've been missing. And you have that aha moment. Whereas if you're just always editing different photos, you never have the chance to really learn and master that specific situation. Okay. We've got a hillside, Houston. Dial that back. Just trying to do a little bit at a time. Okay. Now we're going to try and accent our grass up here. And it looks like I might have accidentally masked this grass with the sky. So I'm going to fix that in two seconds. But for now, let's just attempt to Brighten it up. Let's check this mask. Yep, you can see what a messy job that was. So we're going to go to range mask, set it to luminance. Take the luminance so that it's only affecting the bright parts of the image. That's not going to work. Let's set it to color instead. Grab my eyedropper. 
set it to this blue part. Now it's only going to target the blue, this guy. That's better. So here's our progress so far. And now we just keep shaping. You know what the beautiful part about doing this is? It's kind of like painting, but unlike painting, you just press Command Z and you have an undo button. I really haven't done any painting. I'd like to try it, but I'm imagining I get really frustrated because I'd just be like, where is the undo? Because I make so many mistakes. Okay, so I really am just bringing out the detail in this hill. As you can see, I pretty much masked all of it. But it looks good, so that's okay. Good, good, good. And now, I might actually go for these fence posts. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Just brush on each of these fence posts. Now, I'm not being very careful with my mask. If you wanna do more intense effects that are gonna show up, then you need to be much more careful. But as long as you're being subtle, you can work faster. So that's the advantage of doing less intense edits and just layering things one piece at a time. So there's before, there's after. Making some progress. Making my way downtown. Mm -hmm. So overall, I'm just gonna make a few global adjustments. I'm gonna brighten things up. Maybe raise the shadows a little bit. So I absolutely would keep going on this photo. But for the sake of time, I think that kind of gets it 80% of the way there. And then you can mess around, see what you come up with. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. so I can see it. Okay, this photo looks really cool. I'm going to start by just darkening down the background, really making him pop out. So I'm going to go here to my Dehaze Darken Brush, which is right there. Invert it with the apostrophe key. And I'm actually not going to lower the clarity this time. I'm going to raise the clarity on the outside but darken it down. Okay, so here's what's happening. Before, hello, come on, and after. <laughs> Let's try that again. Here's before, here's after. So we're really just placing the focus in on him without making it like dreamy and airy on the outside. Okay, next step, we're gonna bring out the detail. I might actually try and enhance the light of his bike and add kind of a faux sun flare in there, lens flare. So we're gonna go down to our, where are we, special effects? Sun flare. Just like that. And now the secret here is I'm gonna try and do several of them and make them more subtle so that I get more of a feather. Because sometimes Lightroom's feather just isn't high enough. So what I'm gonna do is like a little bit of a flare like that. And this is gonna be my bigger one. And I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna make it smaller I'm going to make it slightly more intense. And just to make it a little bit less like perfect, I'm going to move it off to the side just a bit. I don't know if this is going to work yet. We're just sort of messing around. I'm going to duplicate it again. And this one I'm going to make really small. And just in the middle like that. All right, so here's before, here's after. Now. I'm not really loving it in the middle. I think if we kind of messed around a little bit further, we might get it the way we want it. I think the middle needs to be brighter, first off. And less red, maybe more yellow. And then slightly more round. So, is it perfect? No, is it kind of interesting? Yeah, so I'm going to keep it for now. Mess around. See if you can come up with something even better. Lightroom is not super great for adding lens flares, but it's kind of an interesting thing just to play with and see what you can do. So again, I'm just going to exaggerate the texture on the rest of this bike, on his helmet, on everything there. 
And then I'm going to do a little bit of dodging and burning on these posts and pillars. So we're going to start by resetting exposure up and just highlighting the bright areas of this image really, really fast so that you don't get bored. Oops. Okay, so here's before that, here's after. Do the same thing. If you want to, you can actually go to the range mask. So do a really sloppy job and then dial it in a little bit just by making sure it doesn't affect the shadows by bringing that range up. And I'm going to do the same thing, only this time making it darker. We're going to exaggerate the clarity, texture, dehaze. Just add some real mood to this image now. This is the grunge brush. Before, after, here's our unedited and our edited, right? And we've even played with color. So if you want to, then we'll go down to our split toning. Let's mess around so we can get a real blockbuster look here. We're going to do nice teal shadows. Bam. Who knew you would get to edit a photo of Batman today? There you go. Before, after, inside Lightroom. Have fun. Tag me. I want to see what you come up with. Okay, we've got one last portrait here. Pretty simple, pretty basic. We're just going to grab our exposure, bring it up, warm it up, and correct that white balance. As you can see, her skin's really green. So just taking your time and getting that white balance right is going to make all the difference in the world when it comes to the edit. If you're ever wondering, why don't these presets work? Well, it's probably your white balance is bad and the lighting and camera was bad or your composition was bad. Most of the time, presets tend to work pretty decent whether the, the ones that I made or ones other people have made, they do work. It's just that they don't fix issues in your photos or like white balance, that kind of thing. So you can see, no matter which way I go, there's some weird coloring going on and that's because it was taken around sunset. So we're just gonna have to deal with that. We're gonna embrace the fact that it's kind of sunsetty and warm and muddy. Then we can go down to our camera calibration and we can attempt to improve it a little bit further. Now it's kind of hard because I don't exactly know what her skin tone would have looked like because I don't know this particular model. So it's harder to correct. I don't exactly know where her skin should be. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around there, but who knows. Okay, that's before, that's after. You could cool it down and darken it down. Go for more of a sunset -y vibe. Sometimes it's better not to fight what was originally in the photo before after and then rather than brighten everything just brighten her so ignore that really weird effect we're going to reset our brush by holding alt and then take our contrast down and just brush in on her something like that then do the same thing with the radial filter contrast down I'm just going to brighten her up ever so slightly. Okay. And then it looks like this photo was taken ISO 200, but it seems very dark, very underexposed, and very muddy. If we brighten it up, you can see how much noise we got going on in her hair, which is going to make this trickier. The more noise you have in your photo, the less dynamic range you have in your photos. So it's going to be hard to recover some of this. It looks like her hair is clipped, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually brighten it up. So just make sure when you're taking your shots, get the exposure as close as you can, have the ISO as low as you can, and you'll have way, way more options when it comes to editing. So let's go down here to our denoise. This is a good chance to practice this. If you hold the Alt key on your keyboard, it'll actually toggle to black and white, and it makes it easier to see what's going on. You can see what's kind of interesting is as we take the noise luminance up, we're also cleaning up her skin. So sometimes when you're actually just editing portraits taken during the day, having a little bit of denoise can be helpful just to smooth out the skin a little bit. Fun fact, a little hack for you. Okay, I'm going to take my sharpening all the way up because I'm crazy and like photos sharp. 
go figure. <laughs> but basically, when photos were taken uh, in a situation that was like really noisy, you can add a lot of sharpening and get away with it. So here's before, here's after. Let's just show you without the sharpening and denoise and with it. So we've cleaned up our skin. We've also added a little bit of sharpness along the edges. That's a little too far, so we'll dial that back and maybe bring the detail up. And then lastly, you guessed it, I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast by doing some dodging and burning. But this time I'm gonna be super lazy about it. We're just gonna grab our range mask, go to luminance, set it to bright-ish. There you go. Like that. And I could do one more under the chin. This one's just going to, oh, hello. Or you could grab the wrong thing, Ryan. Reset this and go under her chin. And that's just going to exaggerate her jawline a little bit. Take the clarity and texture down as well. And last, because we have a portrait here, we're just going to clean up her skin. Texture down, clarity down. DA is down a little bit. There you have it. We got before, we got after. Play around. See what you come up with. I can't wait to see. So hopefully this video has been helpful in some way, shape, or form. It's given you a few different techniques to try and some photos to practice on. I encourage you, take your time, have some fun with it, and tag me at Signature Edits Co. so I can see what you come up with. I love being able to kind of take part and feel like oh, we've connected in some way. So if this video was helpful, do me a big favor. Can you hit that like button and make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. Leave a comment below with any questions, thoughts, comments, things that I missed, things that you would do better. I don't care. Tell me a joke. It would be really great to just have you take part in this conversation. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, have a great weekend, week, whatever day you're on, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Create something awesome. Peace.